the good chance to get noticed. Racing now under the green and good, getting a good start was Weber, no doubt about that. Bright starts to move off now, field pours through. This is where it'll be interesting though. First chicane, very Baguana important. Done a they good start. Look at that. Baguana into second and Conta Paris into third with the middle. Someone coming down the inside. Oh, good. Oh, oh, oh dear, 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 dear. And that's dear, an Argyp car. Yeah, I know. It's an Argyp car. And have a look, there's that people going all over the grass. They're going all around move. in here. I think it's Patey, I think. Jason Bright quickly showed why he qualified on pole, getting the early jump on the field. Uh, Bright's made a bit of a break here, and unfortunately with Darren going on the inside like that, he's uh, put his teammate back too. Conta Paris is way back because um, he got, oh gee, they're really coming through here sliding. These little tyres, oh, Mark was just clipping it up. These little tyres, they don't have much grip on them at all. They are treaded, the, the circuit's quite slippery. It's the second race this morning and the track's still relatively cool. And, um, you know, they're, they're just sliding all over the place. Cameron Partington wouldn't be one of the finishers. Oh, dear, dear, dear. There's plenty going on it's here. Car five has gone out. That's Darren, uh, Cameron Partington. Oh. He's had the big Mel slide Rose straight across. Cams will be after him for an off-road license next. Super license. <laughs> There'll be plenty of those, I think. Look at Jason right out the front, looking back in the mirror, saying, what's happening? Look, here we are. There's a replay coming into the chicane. Oh, dear, he now, I think... Um, one of the guys had too much braking on the rear, got it a bit uh, sideways, and the bloke in the yellow, I think, spun out of, uh, out of sympathy for him. With Bright opening up a good lead, the main interest was in the battle for second and third between Barguana and Weber. Yeah, that's Weber in the yellow car now, comes up alongside of Barguana. Oh, not have there. a look at this, you can't go through there. Comes through the double chicane, sits right up behind him. Barguana gets a little bit twitchy. Weber decides just to back off, just a fracture there. Get a little bit of breathing space before he launches up beside him under brakes again. Barguan has had one on the left-hand side, so you can see all his bodywork is terribly loose, so um, hopefully that won't fly off. Weber, Barguana, Weber just hounding him. You can see he gets pretty twitchy under brakes. The car gets skittish in the front end. But just hounding Barguana at the moment. This is the real race. Bright's out in front of the Valvoline car, car three, with a, a fairly healthy lead at the moment. Now tries to get the slipstream. Yeah, it was very important. See, now Weber has taken a slightly ex, uh, exit line through that one there to try and keep his revs up, try and keep the wheels as straight as he possibly can to hope to tuck in behind Barguana and get a toe. I think he's just a little bit too far back, but if he's going to do it, he'll pull up under brakes for the next chicane. Here you go, look, here he goes. So Weber now dives out of the uh, airstream, tries to sit himself up and got him too. Beautiful move, nicely done. As drivers struggled to get any advantage, Dougal McDougal decided the shortest route was in a straight line. Past the late breakers, though. That's a little bit of an advantage there, Dougal. I'll tell you what, a few have done that too, just quite. There's been plenty over the grass area. And unlike many other classes of motorsport, it's the driver's skills rather than mechanical superiority that provides the difference. These things are only within four or five horsepower of one another and it gets to the stage where, quite frankly, on a Sunday morning when we arrive at the circuit, we look at the wind. And if the wind's turned around and you've got a headwind, you've got to take the back of the gearbox off and perhaps change your gear ratios. Not everyone had it under control. Oh, he just gets it all wrong. At least he didn't hit anything. Coming into the closing stages, Weber was quickly catching Bright. On the last lap, it was still anybody's race. Weber then really trying to get the better run, and he gets a lot of pace coming out of there too. He's trying to take a different line just to get the slingshot effect to get through. Perhaps under brakes, he's right up into the gearbox area. Look at yellow this. Yellow flag. Well, he can't pass here now anyway. Unfortunately, there's a yellow flag out, so he'll be very wild about that because on the last lap, when you're that close and, you, yeah. and you've been told that you can't pass, it's very frustrating. So they want to get past that yellow section as quick as he can and then get on with having a go at him. So they're now coming into this tight, twisty section. So he hasn't got long to go. It's really only quarter of a lap. You can see him hounding, looking, putting pressure on, but Bright's pretty cool. He's just to withstood Ooh. the pressure. Now he comes up. He's really getting some nice runs out of the corner. But he... What he has to do now, though, is he has to concentrate on getting out of this left hand really clean and then try and pull up at the finish line. That's his only chance. This one here, look, nice and clean coming out. He's taken a tight line. No, see, look at Bright, two car links. Bright just keeps the power down now. He has got the horsepower down the straight, but he can tuck his head down. Look, he's uh, trying uh, to get every ounce he can, but Bright should hang on. Good drive from Bright. He takes the flag. He led all of the way. A marvellous drive from Mark Webber. He really did come from a long way back and had to survive that accident and then fight his way through the pack to get second place. Getting a big...